All right, what's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 1989 Volvo 240 wagon. Up front is a 2.3 liter inline four, and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. This video is sponsored by carmarshall.com. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link down in the description below. Carmarshall.com advertises for over 100,000 vehicles across the US. But let's get back to that 2.3 liter inline four. Well, it's not the quickest thing in the world. This is the naturally aspirated option, although there was a turbo option offered in this body style. This is the tried and true naturally aspirated version. And so we're pretty much up to temperature. Let's uh, give her a rip. Hey, hey, that was unimpressive. Go back on, please. There we go. There we go. It's a naturally aspirated 2.3 liter. Luckily, the motor in this car is not going to stay in here for very long, but it's very underpowered and there's nothing sporty about this chassis at all. You really feel just how unaerodynamic, unathletic this car really is. You know, this car has kind of been idolized over the last couple of years, really, because it is the Swedish brick. They're indestructible. They're giant. They're, they're very square. And that's all very true, but powerful, but athletic. It's not on the list of adjectives for the 240. Come on. Come on, old gal. Come on. Like I said, paired to it is a four-speed automatic transmission, and it hasn't given me too much trouble quite yet during this drive, but as the owner has told me, every once in a while, a little orange arrow will come up on the dashboard, and that's when overdrive just doesn't want to show up to the party today. And this car only has 71,000 miles on it. This is actually a pretty low mile specimen of the 240, so we can't really attribute it to hundreds of thousands of miles. Last but not least, of course, the Volvo 240 is rear wheel drive. So I guess you can get it to do donuts and burnouts, maybe. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a couple gauges and a clock. On the far left is my clock. I actually get a just a regular clock on the dashboard. Now, I sort of like this because it does match the gauges. I think it looks classy and it's nice to have a clock in a car. However, I'd much rather have a tachometer than a clock, at least this day and age. But in the center, I do get a speedometer with that famed 55 mile an hour red line. And what I mean by that is cars of the 80s, the government mandated US fastest speed limit was 55 miles an hour. And they launched a campaign essentially warning drivers not to go over 55 miles an hour. This is why you'll find in the first gen Mazda RX-7, there's a little arrow pointing to 55 miles an hour. That's why the Fox body Mustang, some of them only went up to 80 miles an hour with a red line at 55. A lot of cars pointed out the fact that 55 miles an hour was the maximum. And while this speedometer goes up to 120, so the red line isn't even halfway up the speedometer, it still warns you, hey, don't go over this speed. But the car's not limited in any way. There's not like there's a governor on it. I could ring this thing out to 100 miles an hour. I don't know if I'd want to, but I could. Then to the far right, I do have my coolant temperature and my fuel. That all seems to be working well. Very simple, easy to read. It's just a bar. On the steering wheel, I don't actually have anything except for the horn and the Volvo badge, which is kind of nice. Very plain, very simple, very 80s steering wheel. To the left of the gauges, I do have my headlight switches. They're actually sort of up on the gauges. It's a very 80s thing. And then we get to the door. The door has manual mirrors, manual windows, but the doors of the 240 are very, very satisfying. They clunk really well. They have good weight to them. And the actual inner door handles have a good sort of mechanism. They feel like the trigger of a 38 Special. I mean, it just, it, it feels really nice. And the build quality, actually isn't too bad with these although we'll talk about some of the interior stuff isn't great but you have to remember this thing is 31 years old getting up there in age moving on to the center 
I do have a radio that has since been swapped out with a more modern radio, you know, Bluetooth aux, things like that. So that is not the factory radio, but down below that we have the factory air conditioning and heating. So first and foremost, I do have a cigarette lighter. Then we have the defroster button, hazard button, and then air conditioning, hot, cold, max, things like that. I also do have a little warning light for my seat belts. Volvo was very, very forward with their safety. So Volvo actually invented, or a person at Volvo, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name, invented the seat belt and they didn't really, they patented it, but allowed it for reuse so that every car manufacturer could have seat belts because they're such a genius safety piece of equipment. It's similar to how Tesla is letting other companies use their technology and research on self-driving. You know, safety features like that, I think it's so great to share around and now every single car ever made has seat belts and that's really to think because of Volvo or at least the way we use seat belts, the three point where it's up here, down here and across the lap, that was a Volvo thing. So as we know, seatbelts today, that is from Volvo, which is pretty interesting. And we have to thank Volvo for that. But down below that little warning light, we do have just regular air conditioning, heating controls, temperature left and right. We have three giant buttons for recirculating, defrost, and putting it at our feet. We don't really get to choose where it goes. You could just, it's either at your feet or not at your feet. And then I have my fan speed one through four, and then a giant cubby hole that's not filled with anything. Now getting to the shifter, the shifter looks like pretty much any automatic from this sort of age or era, but what's comical about it is that you have to push the giant button on the top in order to get it to move in and out of gear. So it's nothing unusual, but it is just kind of funny seeing that it's such a large button and it's so obnoxious. Then down in the center, I do have something very, very interesting which is heated seats. Yes, this car, the 1989 Volvo 240, came with factory installed heated seats. That's really impressive in my book. But getting to the seats, the seats remind me of like 90s GM, like, like an old Caprice. There's that sort of material, they're leather, but they're like a tougher leather rather than like a luxurious leather that we'd get today. The seats are very, very comfortable. You just kind of sink into them. They're overall great seats. I could spend a lot of time in these seats. They have a good, decent amount of bounce to them. And I just really like them. I really, really like them. But speaking of seats, we do have actually back seats. So let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1989 Volvo 240 wagon. And honestly, I like, look at the head. I mean, this thing goes on for miles. But door cards are really thin. Let's see if you can see that. Really thin, um, nice space. The seat, first of all, it's kind of crooked. But second of all, not great leg room. Um, but I mean, just like look at the plush. This isn't really plush. This is like a sort of foam, I guess. But uh, I mean, all of this stuff is just so plush, so squeezable. Headroom, great. I mean, headroom is really, really good. And that's, that's all the cargo space. I'm not gonna get out and show you, but it's very, very large. I'd say probably three and a half to four feet, like from the back of this to the end of the car, which is pretty cool. I mean, I do feel like I'm sitting in a bubble a little bit because there's no tints and the windows are very large, but yeah, it's not a bad back seat. I like it. And uh, I think on a road trip, it would be pretty, pretty fun. Now we gotta talk about the looks. I personally don't think that this car is a stunner. I don't think it looks great. I don't think it's anything too, too special out of the box. However, I think we all have a certain nostalgia for these cars, and that's why they get a free pass on looking good. The boxing, they're so quirky, they're so boxy, they're so, you know, ready for anything. You know, I just, I, I love the look of them in that respect. I think if you came up to me on the street and said, hey, what do you think of a Volvo 240? I'd say that they look good. I don't think they look textbook good. I think they just look good because of what they are, not what they look like. They look good because of a personality thing. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever met someone and they're not outright gorgeous, but their personality is just bang on. They make you laugh, they're kind, they're lighthearted. And so that kind of ends up making them very attractive. That's the deal here. 
you won't really find this on the cover of a magazine in a swimsuit, but this will be at all your family parties. But this will be at all your game nights. Go out drinking with this one. Have some fun. Laugh. Laugh until your stomach hurts. That's what this car looks like to me. And overall, I have to say, I'm a little bit torn here with the Volvo 240 because I love this thing so much. It's so quirky and weird and just odd and such a piece of history. But at the same time, everyone idolizes these 240s. Everyone's like, oh, I need to get me one of those and turbo it and do all this stuff to it. And honestly, I don't really see the appeal from that standpoint. Yeah, it's a cool car. It's interesting. I just don't understand why it's quite at legendary status. And this is, if I'm gonna drive any Volvo 240, this is the one. I love the color. This is my favorite color for Volvos. It's the wagon. Manual would have been nice, but this is a good snapshot of what a completely stock, regular Volvo 240 is. And honestly, at the end of the day, I really like it. I just, I'm a little upset by the performance, but that's why this engine is not staying in here for too long. And I'm excited to see the evolution of this particular car. So I have reviewed actually a turbo one of these. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll leave that at the end of the video, as well as I drove a 1970s Volvo 142S. So I will put that at the end of the video as well. I feel like I'll have to talk to Ethan, but I feel like I might be an honorary Volvo Gravy Boy. Check out Volvo Gravy Boys on Instagram. They got tons of Volvo stuff. I feel like I've reviewed three of these old bad boys now. Five if you count the new SUVs that I've driven. I feel like personally I should get honorary member status as a Volvo Gravy Boy. Huge thank you to my good friend who let me take out his Volvo 240. He knows who he is, and you probably know who he is. He's a great friend of mine, good guy, and uh, he's not going to let this thing remain slow for too long. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. Uh, uh, there goes a sign from my soul. Uh,